Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome back to another exciting episode of lighting. In the last episode, we went over directional lights as well as some of the lighting attributes. And this time we're gonna go over the other types of lights that's provided by Maya. So under create lights, there is ambient light, directional, point, spot, area, and volume. In last tutorial, we went over these two, and now we're gonna go over the rest. Don't forget that you can download this desk at academicphoenixplus.com, and you can also have access to other fun things such as my newsletter, uh, blogs, and workshops, and all these other fun things that I provide for you. So again, it's academicphoenixplus.com. I also wanna say thank you for your support. I make these tutorials for you, so thank you for being here and watching my videos. All right, so last time we had a directional light, and it looks something like this. This is basically one of our results. Maybe I should save this. So before, when you're about to save this, you wanna to go to File, Save Image, image Options, and so make sure you turn on Apply Gamma Exposure. There is sometimes gamma on this, so you wanna make sure that's active, and then just save the image. I'm gonna delete the directional light and create a point light. Now the point light emits light in this particular space right here, in all directions. So it's very similar to an ambient light, except that it actually has a gradient leaving the source. So instead of being flat all the way around, it actually has a hot spot in the center and then it gradients out. This is really nice for candles and it's also really nice for fireplaces and things like that. Very similar to a, uh, the attributes of a directional light, we have a, the color, which you can go crazy with. We also have an intensity. You can increase the intensity. So notice that the lights are going this direction. Also notice the shadows are not parallel like the directional light. It actually comes from the center out. So you're gonna get some really nice shadows. And we have the other things that we discussed. Now decay is here and I read in the documentation that it doesn't work in Arnold. So we're going to skip uh, decay, but for the ones that are using Maya software, it actually means that it uh, dies out faster. So well, let me see if I can show you actually, let's see. Let's see if this is going to work. Wow. Wow. All right, let me reduce my intensity here. Yeah, it looks terrible. Anyway, so don't do that. Um, going back to Arnold, much prettier. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to show you also was shadows. Under shadows, there is a shadow color, and by default, it's black, which makes sense. It's the lack of light. That's why shadows are black. Um, but if you want it to be artistic, you can change your shadows to a different color. So I just wanted to show that really quickly so that in case you wanted to do something abstract or whatever purpose it is about changing colors, you can. Moving on to Arnold. So very similar to the attributes of the previous light, it does have used color temperature. It's got exposure, so we can brighten the exposure up. It also has samples, which is going to be important. Um, we need to make sure that it's high because right now the shadows are really sharp. So we have a radius, and the radius does, it blurs the edges of the shadow, so you get some nice looking shadows. Now, same thing as the directional light, it needs more sample so that it doesn't have so much noise. So I'm gonna make a selection here. I'm gonna increase my samples. And notice how, look at the difference between here and also here. So the higher the samples, the higher the quality. However, the render time will increase. So don't just plug in any number in there and go, okay, well, I'm gonna put 15. It's gonna sample that 15 times when it's really only needs maybe five. So you increase it numerically, and then when you see no change in the shadow information, then you don't increase more samples. My sample is five, my radius is one, and then we also have normalize. So when I turn off normalize, it looks at the radius of the object and then ignores and basically uses that instead. So uh, pick your battles. It's up to you which one you wanna use, normalize on or off. Just keep that in mind that if you turn off normalize and it will make it, usually makes it brighter. Uh, normalize is usually mostly used in area lights, which we'll go over next. Cast shadow, same story, turn it off. The shadows disappear, turn it back on. Shadow density means how much of the shadow do you wanna see? 
Do you want it to be a little bit subtle or do you want it to be accurate at one? And then volumetric shadows, which we don't have any lighting. And just like the other ones, you can turn off diffuse so you only have specularity. You can turn off specularity so you only have diffuse and so on and so forth. I did wanted to show you object display. Uh, there is a visibility, you can turn it off. So that's another way you can turn off a light. So you can hide it, you can, well, if you don't want to delete it, don't delete it, but you can hide it, you can turn off illuminate by default, or but then you have to refresh. So go ahead and refresh Arnold. And then you can also go to object display and turn off the visibility. All right, so that was the point light. The next light I want to go over is a spotlight. A spotlight, that's exactly what it sounds like. It is a cone that when you point it to an object, it produces a circle. And this is really nice because you really get to know exactly where that light source is and how much do you want it to illuminate. So if you wanted to do a flashlight, for example, this would be the way to do it. Headlights, um, spotlights. Uh, so on and so forth, but it has a lot more uses than that. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about its attributes. So the first one is color as always. It has a nice color, so we can change the color. Let's pick something else. Mm, let's do orangey. There we go, something warm. Uh, we have intensity, so you can increase the intensity. We have all the other buttons that work and don't work. So illuminate by default works, but these guys don't. Cone angle is how big do you want the cone to be? Do you want it to be, and I can't even see the, uh, let me move this back a little bit so you can see the effect a little bit more. There it is, you see the size? So what's nice about this is that you can control how big the cone is. So this is the cone angle. This has a lot of uses, by the way. Some people use co uh, a very wide cone angle to create, um, notice how flat it is, kind of like bounce lights. Uh, the penumbra angle, notice how it starts to soften the edges. It's basically softening the edge around here so you don't have such a sharp. So it's not about the shadow information. That's not what we're talking about. It doesn't really affect the shadow. It's about this edge right here. So you can increase the penumbra angle to soften that edge. Now this is more obvious, the drop off is more obvious if I point it directly down. So let me just move this so we can see everything. There we go, there we go, maybe move it up, okay. Let me increase the intensity. All right, so let's go back to the default. This is the penumbra. So do you see that it's widening the light? So that's something that you got to keep in mind is that it actually widens the light, but it blurs the edge, which is really important. Now, if I go put this back to zero, oh, and by the way, you can go negative, so you can, you know, shrink the interior. So it's, you have complete control of which way you want the light to go. Let me zero this out. Um, we have the drop off. You see how it's uh, controlling the gradient so instead of just manipulating the edge it's actually manipulating the gradient from the center to the edge so that's where the drop off is this is really important because a lot of the times lights are not flat uh, lights have a tendency to have a little bit of um, of gradient coming from the center out so not just from the edge but from the center out so usually my values I use is 10 3 and then I increase the cone angle so I get a really nice, soft light. That's usually my default numbers, by the way. Okay, so we went over all of this. Let's go ahead and we have shadow color. So you know how to change the light, the color. Let's take a look at Arnold. So Arnold, you're gonna see it's a common trend. Uh, you have the color temperature, you have your exposure, you have your samples and your radius. So let's get, look at some shadows here. Whoops, I just put E on the, okay, good. Maya is smart enough to know that E is not a number, so it ignored it. Okay, I'm gonna rotate my camera just a little bit so we can see the shadows. Okay, very dramatic shadows. We played with the light source, so now we're gonna play with the shadows. The shadows is controlled by the radius, whoops. As you can see, it will literally scatter the shadows uh, significantly. And of course, this all depends on your scene. If your scene is gigantic, 
your light values may be different than mine. So just because my values are working in this scene doesn't mean that it's going to work on your scene. But the theories are the same, uh, small values versus large values. All right, so we have a lot of noise in this render, so we need to increase our samples. All right, so now you can notice that the render is taking a little bit longer, but the quality is significantly better. So like the other, you can turn on and off the shadows. It does have an aspect ratio, so take a look at this. It's actually pretty fun. Actually, let me increase my intensity because I feel like you can't really see it very much. And my exposure. There we go. Okay. So this aspect ratio, when I start decreasing it, notice that it what starts happening to the light. It almost starts to collapse it into a thin line. So let's take a look at it as we look down. So it almost makes it into like a flat light. So that's the aspect ratio. So again, it's just going to give you more control over your light system. Uh, let's see what lens radius does. So lens radius basically is, if you take a look at the solid angle in, um, documents, it basically means that, um, that instead of having one point of light coming through here, you, it actually rounds it out. So this is really helpful when you have atmospheric volume enabled, but right now I don't have it enabled, so we're not going to be able to see that, but at least you know what lens radius is. We've already talked about volumetric uh, shadows. And finally, of course, diffuse. You can turn off the diffuse and keep the specular. You can turn off the specular and keep everything else and so on and so forth. Cool, so that is Spotlight. This is actually a really great light source. It's actually a lot of fun. Whoops, I just deleted it, so now my scene is dark. All right, so let's take a look at an area light. Now, we have to be careful with this area light because we have an area light here and we also have an area light in Arnold. Now, they are very similar. They're, they're actually extremely similar. Um, but the difference is, is that the Maya light system is very similar to the, the ones that we've seen before. And the Ar Arnold light just goes directly to the Arnold attributes. So to be honest, this area light from Maya is a little bit outdated. Um, and you might as well, since we're rendering in Arnold, we might as well use the Arnold area light. Arnold's area light is a plane of light, the light source that emits from a surface. So right now it's a square. And if I increase the scale, you're going to see that not much happens. This is where normalize really comes in handy. If I turn off normalize, that's where area light really shines. So you can control the intensity of the light or how bright the light is based on this. Now, this is a very accurate light. So I usually use area lights for windows. Um, and I also use area lights for computer screens. By the way, um, I am going to be lighting this with multiple types of lights. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, so just like anything else, we have an intensity, we have an exposure, we have color temperature, we have illuminate by default. What's special about Arnold's area lights is that it has a quad, a cylinder, so it will change its shape to a cylinder, so it emits like a cylinder. So let me scale it down a little bit and bring it in. You may be wondering why there's a light source like this. Uh, it's because sometimes you have light sources like neon lights and so on and so forth that need a light source like this, that it would take a lot of lights to make a neon light. But with this one, you can just create it like so. And we also have a disc. And a disc is just a circular way of emitting light. So we have some, this is, just gives us a little bit more control. We have a spread. You can see that I can control the spread of the light. So it's not just flat completely, it actually has control. So you see how the light's slowly kind of going in this direction, kind of similar to a, do you see how it's almost like scaling? A resolution. Uh, this is basically just a rendering resolution. So I would definitely recommend to increase your render, your resolution. Um, it's kind of like samples. You have to play with everything here in an area light. You have to play with the intensity, exposure, and scale. 
to be getting some nice uh, lighting, but you also, for, for less noise, you also have to play with the resolution and the samples. So I'm gonna increase my samples. Now, notice that my shadows are already pretty soft. So area lights are considered expensive because they automatically have really soft shadows and it's very accurate. Now, there are ways to control that, but uh, basically you can round out and do soft edge. So there's ways to control the shadows a little bit more. Um, so I would definitely recommend for you to play with that. Um, it does have uh, cast shadow, it does have shadow density, and yes, it does have shadow color. So just like in the previous lights, it has a like, shadow color. And it has everything else like volumetric shadows, diffuse, specular, SS, and a bunch of fun things. So that is the area light. And the last light, which unfortunately does not work, but it was extremely expensive anyway, was the volumetric light. You used to be able to control the color of this light from, let's say, blue to that. Maybe bring it closer together. You could see it and it had a, this interesting color range. So if I try to render it out, it's not gonna work. But if you wanted to see its effect, ooh, uh, you can see it in a Maya software. So it was a way to control it. Now, if you wanna mimic this, I would suggest that you just use two lights instead. So one on top of the other, but um, it really, you really, we rarely used it. So, I mean, I rarely used it in the industry. So, so volume light and ambient light don't work in Arnold, which is fine. I rarely used ambient light because it just made everything look flat. And the only purpose was that I put it in for t a tiny little bit of bounce lights and make sure that there's no dark corners. The reality is, is that you really don't need it. You should, now that Arnold comes with bounce lights, you don't need that. Volumetric lights, I only used it maybe once and then I deleted it. <laughs> so uh, I really, I don't think we're going to miss anything. Area light is, uh, you know, there's two of them. Uh, I would highly recommend that you use the area light provided by Arnold. So that basically covers Maya lighting. The next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to light this uh, scene with just these lights so that you can push the Maya lighting. And then afterwards, I am going to show you guys how to use the lighting provided by Arnold. I hope that was helpful. I really appreciate your support. Please uh, leave me any messages or comments or questions below. Uh, you can always find me at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can sign up for my newsletter and get some free stuff, including ebooks, downloads, and so much more. So check, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. So thank you again, and I will see you next time.